All right. Clint from the doorway too, hanging out with the guys from, I think it's Drot is the way it's pronounced. So I want to make sure I'm not butchering the name to begin with. Uh, but I got uh, Mateus and is it uh, Arve? Is that how you say your first name? Uh, yeah. All right. Let's awesome. Go. Perfect. <laughs> uh, so no, I really do appreciate this guys very, very much. It's very cool to get to do this. Uh, really do love the new Orcus record very, very much. I actually went back and listened to the EP because I like the full length so much. Um, so uh, the first question I want to ask is, what made uh, you guys form this project, being that you guys have other very high profile things that you're doing? I think we just started talking about it like five or six years ago because, I mean, me and the drummer, we knew each other from like back in the days. We almost grew up together or at least from like high schoolish. So, so we played together a lot back then. So we, we've kind of always talked about playing together again, but we've been so busy, busy with like other bands and touring and stuff. So it was hard to find the time and stuff. And, and then me and Matthias started to work together. Um, and yes, yeah, so, so I think we've been talking about this band for five years, but <laughs> never had the actual chance to <laughs> get started. So Cool. Um, and what was the reason for doing it? Was there a specific style that you weren't getting to do with other projects or was it just a bunch of friends getting together and making music? Yeah, the latter. I think we just wanted to play together and, and see what came out of it. So it, we didn't have an, any plans or intention. We, we didn't even know what kind of music we want to play. So <laughs> it was kind of exciting the first rehearsal when we finally got the time to come together. And so we just plugged in and started to play and no like ideas or anything. So anything different from you, Matthias, at all? Or? Uh, the style of music. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, you can say. Um, I Actually, I come from a cl classical background back in the days, but have like mainly been doing like electronic and rock music for many years. Uh, but trying out this new setup with Arva and Eva uh, was... Um, it's a has been a new experience for me. So um, I think when we we started out, it was actually Arve who pushed on. I made this New Year's resolution, yeah. and now we're uh, two days. Uh, it's two days until uh, New Year's Eve. We have to get started, and we we couldn't make it, so we started January January 2020, and just jamming together. Uh, and the chemistry was really good nice. from the beginning. And, and I think for all the three of us, we, we, we've been working together, like me and Arve have been working, me and Ivar have been working, and they have been working together, but not as a trio, of course. So uh, you don't know how, how the chemistry is when you get together as a new group. Uh, but uh, it turned out to be really... Cool. I think we may have just froze. Are you guys still there? Uh, most importantly, uh, musically. <laughs> perfect. All right. No, thank, thank you so much for that. Uh, I, I really do appreciate it. So uh, I, I kind of want to talk about the two records, uh, how closely they were recorded together and kind of ask you, why did you do an EP and an album within like five months of each other? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, like Matthias said, we, we just like jammed a lot the first rehearsal. So we didn't actually kind of write anything other than what came out of the jam sessions. I think we did that for a couple of months. So then we had to like go back and listen back to it all. So it was a couple of hours of music. And then we discovered we had a lot of great ideas and a lot of like basis for for songs in them, which was kind of surprising, I think, at least <laughs> at least for me, because I didn't remember what we actually played. <laughs> mm. So, so um, 
then of course the whole COVID stuff happened and we got some extra time and it was easier to like make more music and spend more time together. So we had a bunch of songs really and recorded some of them on like the first recording session. And then to get like, we want to get like things started pretty quickly. So, so it was just easier to start off with an EP. And we also like got connected to by Norse who was interested in, uh, in signing us. So, and I thought it was a good idea to start with an EP as well, just to kind of get things started. So we had a little better time or more time to like plan the album and do that proper. So. Cool. No, thank you so much for that. Uh, so let's talk about by Norse for a minute then, because uh, doesn't Ivor have something to do with it? Like he actually co-owns it uh, as well too, or he's like a partner in it? Yeah, yeah I think it, it's actually Ivor and uh, Aina from uh, the Valdruna and, yep. uh, and Simon. I don't know if you know him, Simon Fullerman, who's like actually the manager of both Enslaved and Valdruna, who... <laughs> It's the three of them who kind of started by Norse. Nice. And yeah, so I think at first they only had Valdrun, I guess, and then started signing a few other bands. Yeah, I, I, I saw I, I saw that they're 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 doing some stuff with, with with Enslaved as well, and so that's that's pretty cool. Um, but uh, I, I guess what I want to do is kind of talk about the two records now, if we can. Uh, so. The first, the the the, the, the uh, I want to start with the EP. Uh, it's a little bit different to me than what the LP is. Uh, there's a little more mix of kind of like ethno ambient spaghetti western kind of elements, if I can kind of like say that into it. My my favorite track overall is going to be Dance of the Milings on the EP, and I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that one in general, and just kind of see what your thoughts were on that. Well, I think if I remember correctly, it was also from one, one of the jam sessions. And I think me and Eva just played us more straight groove. And then Matthias came in with this like kind of crazy far out melody. And when we listened back to it, it was like, yeah, we, we all loved it because it's so, it, it, I mean, it's kind of strange, but it has a like unique and a very specific sound to it so it, ha it, it has a, a bit of a club a club element in it and a lot of our jams from especially that period i think it was like march 20 we did when the lockdown uh, uh started we we did a lot of jamming and uh and in all sort of genres actually and some of them are are quite clubby mm. and this is one of them yeah <laughs> yeah it kind of it kind of caught me that way. <laughs> yeah it, everything it, get it had a very catchy album it had a very catchy element to it that's why i was kind of asking about that track in general so um but uh let's let's move on to the to the actual proper orcus record and uh this kind of mixes to me elements of like Prague, more classical elements, and then kind of jazzy avant rock. Uh, I know people say there's metal elements. I hear it, but there's not super metal elements in it for me where like I would say that, it, you know, where, yeah, Enslaved is a metal band. We get it. Okay. Like they're a prog metal band. Like, all right, we, we totally get that, you know, over at one point in time was, was black metal and now they're electronic music and kind of things along those lines. But this band adds heavy elements into kind of a jazzy avant-garde kind of classical electronic vibe. Uh, was this something you were trying to do all along or did this just kind of happen with the three of you doing your thing? I think it just kind of happened because as we said, we were just jamming. So we, we didn't, at least in the beginning, we didn't have any like written stuff. So it wasn't like me coming with a riff or anything to, to the rehearsal. So, so, so it all happened naturally. And, and, and yeah, like, like you said, there, there are some really heavy elements or guitars in there, but it's no like double bass on the drums and stuff. So we don't go all the way into like the classic 
uh, extreme metal stuff at least. So, and I don't know, to, to me that would be like, not that interesting since I've been doing it so, so much with other bands, including Enslaved, of course. Uh, and yeah, I think um, it's cool to have like heavy riff if you like mix it in with other stuff. So you, you got that element, as you say, but you never go all the way because then it kind of, at least the, for drop, it's not that interesting to sure. like. And, and, and also, our, uh, we really like to, with the melodic instruments, uh, with the cello and, and the guitar, to just press rec button and, uh, and uh, experiment with sonic ambient layers, and then just building as it, as it goes. So a, lo a lot of the music is... Um, well, actually, kind of composed that way, mm -hmm. uh, and out of also, also, uh, also, uh, we've done some pre-production stuff uh, uh, before we went to stu the studio, um, uh, where Arva has like guitar riffs and mm -hmm. melodies, uh, and then we, and then we kind of improvise on on them, so um, we 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 build we build the songs kind of kind of a bit uh, what's the word like improvising improvising the the development yeah Oops. and i think it's the same uh, with what you say um the other genres we we mix in we, we don't kind of want to go all the way into one place because then it i don't know it get, gets more <laughs> normal i guess or uh, not to say boring but at, at least for us, we, we like to mix in different stuff to kind of, I think, I think that's basically what this band is about. To Very cool. So there's four songs in particular that I kind of want to talk about uh, right now. So we're going to dig into these a little bit. If you can kind of give me your mindset on them as well, too. And I'm going to go in the order of the record on the songs that have really caught my my ear. Uh, so the the first one is Catabasis. And I kind of want to talk about this because maybe I'm crazy, but there is a very kraut rock kind of 80s vibe to this song that reminds me of like old school can and stuff like that and like wire. And I don't know if you did it on purpose or not, but especially the guitars give me this very wire kind of vibe about them. And uh, I kind of wanted to hear how you created that song because that song is probably the most infectious track on the entire record for me. It's like the catchiest one. And I seem to keep going back to that track. I think it's fair to say it's one of our favorite tracks as well. Uh, <laughs> actually, that, that song is, um, how we made it is pretty crazy, I, I think, because, because we had, I think it was a, a basis of like four different jam sessions. So, but so when we listened back to, like a lot of the jams, we kind of know that, okay, hmm, what if you mix this with this? And because they all had like the same tempo. And and so so I think in the beginning, the song was like 25 minutes long, mm. consists of like four really long jam sessions. And then we like cut each part down to, and worked a lot with it actually to get it to sound like, not the, the four <laughs> different jams, but, to like give it a natural evolvement during the song and yeah so I, I don't know how long it is now probably around six seven minutes or something so <laughs> it's been a lot of editing and especially the last section was really long but um, yeah it ma makes more sense to like uh, edit it down I think and I don't know. Uh, I don't think I had anything in mind when, with the guitar part. Uh, I think it was just like from a jam session. Uh, as I said, I was playing this theme and we kind of got in, in the vibe. So we just kept playing it for like 10 minutes or so. <laughs> I think. Cool. Like building. Yeah. I, I love wire. So that's kind of why I was saying that. It's kind of got that very wire guitar sound. So it made me very excited to hear that. Uh, Mateus, do you have anything on, on this track at all? Yeah, um, 
um, I agree uh, with with uh, like that's the way I remember it as well <laughs> uh, with the song uh, uh, and and we actually um, we, it's not right out of it we, we we recorded that in the same kind of session the same days as we did the EP okay. recordings yeah so we, we did we did a lot of lot of songs there and and they're all like Katabasis is, is of course there are arrangements on 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 the song but but like the the, the core of the band is actually one it's actually one live mm. recording with a, like the bass and like the cello bass and the guitar and drums and then we've of course done layers afterwards cool. yeah, so I, I can't i kind of want to talk a little bit about this is the only one where i think i hear vocals on it it's like a odd vocal loop that keeps going on can you kind of explain why that one track has this vocal layer and all the rest kind of don't it's a russian radio transmission that oh <laughs> came through uh, one of our of us uh out of us uh, amps and then we just oh i'm just kidding <laughs> no uh but was there a particular reason there was vocals on this one track and nothing else well actually it does vocals on several tracks i think it's vocals on one two three four five tracks on the album so half of it actually <laughs> but uh they're more subtle uh, i think this is like probably the track where you can hear it the most because I've read several like reviews and stuff that's like oh there's vocals on this one song and why not the other <laughs> but I mean the first one is obviously some female vocals on mm -hmm. um, and also the last song on uh, the first side the psychopomp is some but there are like really low and <laughs> more like pro singer. so yeah that but that's what i was talking about is where this is more true traditional vocals i heard vocal yeah. arrangements and pieces on other tracks but like there's actual vocals going on on this song so that's kind of was interesting and it's funny that you talk about psycho pump because that's the next song i was just going to talk about because that's the yeah. next song that really caught my ear and that kind of reminds me of like a sci-fi horror soundtrack. And that's kind of the best way I can explain it. Like when I tell people I'm listening to it, um, but very much like an 80s sci-fi horror track. Like it reminds me of that. When you were making Psycho Pump, were you trying to make it that dark and spooky? Because it became a really kind of spooky track. Um, <clears throat> should I say, um, yeah, when we first like, uh, discovered or, or like uh, within the concept, we we really needed that song because it's an uh, important song in the journey. Um, but but it was one of the last songs we actually incorporated in the, in the album. And, um, it, it wasn't that dark in the beginning. I mean, it, it had the dark vibe with the chords and stuff. But um, but yeah, we, we definitely wanted to be really dark because of yeah like like i said what, what it actually meant on the album with the psycho pump and stuff it, it had to be like a dark one so a glimpse of well beauty or or, or uh, melancholy in it yeah the glimpse of hope or the last hope in the middle section <laughs> Well, that's what I was going to say. There's a really kind of uplifting piece in the middle of it. And then it kind of goes back to chaos and darkness again. So I was going to talk a bit about that as well, too. But you, you guys just did. So that's great. So I'm going to jump onto the next track that I really want to talk about. And it, it, it's the Marauders. Uh, and I don't know if there's a such thing as jazz doom, but I think if there is, you guys just created it. Um, because that song is equal parts of like kind of experimental freeform jazz and some of the doomiest goddamn sounds I've ever heard in my life. Uh, it actually like 
the first time I ever heard that song, I was laying in bed. It was like about one o'clock in the morning and it scared the living shit out of me because I was not ready to hear the tones that were coming from that, from the rest of the record. So can you talk a bit about the Marauders and how that, that song came to be and how it became so dense and heavy? Um, yeah, I, I think, um, I think I had that like one riff for it. That, 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 that. No, that's the other one. Sorry. Um, um, down, oh, down, 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 down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it was actually meant to be on, um, we, we had a plan for doing a like really dark EP mm. back in the beginning that was kind of in our minds going to be released after the first EP before we like, yeah, recorded all of songs and we figured out we wanted to do an album instead. So it, it was not like the first songs we were like picked out for the album. But then I think it was Matthias who said it would be perfect on the album or something. But yeah, yeah, I think we only had that one riff and we, we wanted it to be really dark. So, so that was something me and Matthias worked a lot on with all the like shallow, like wooden sounds in the beginning. And yeah, the arrangements. And, and when the drums came on really heavy, it, it kind of all made sense. But mm. we, yeah, kind of, yeah. we wanted it to sound like like uh, uh, like a ship you don't want to meet at yeah. night <laughs> or well, anytime. I, I, I can yeah. tell you that's definitely what happened when I listened to it the first time. It was a very unsettling moment, but it, I keep going back to that track. Um, so the last track I want to talk about is the is the final track, Orcus. And uh, to me, now I kind of want to ask both of you because it almost feels like it's you guys incorporating your other projects with this project where it almost feels like uh, it's got elements of enslaved. It's got elements of over. It's got elements of draw all mixed in together into something where this very much could be an over song or an enslaved song, but you made it a draw track. So can you kind of talk to me about that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um... I, I can assure you that, that was never uh, <laughs> the intention of the song. Um, that was also from one of the earliest jam sessions where we just started on that riff and played it for a long time, building building it up. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess from the album, I think that's the first song that we made actually. On the album, probably together with Katabasis and, uh, and so so, yeah, yeah, we didn't plan to, <laughs> but <laughs> I think it was actually the drummer Eva who, who like picked out that song from one of the jam sessions. It was like, this is a great one. I'm, I'm gonna record new drums on it, and it's gonna be awesome. And, and he also thought it was like a really evil song, so I think he called it like. Unskapens Oxa in Norwegian, who is like Axis of Evil. Axis of Evil in, <laughs> gotcha. in English. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, when we, we started to build a like concept around Orcus, it was kind of a natural theme song or title track. So. It, it encompasses the record very well. It kind of puts a layer of everything that you do in that one track. So that was very cool to kind of close that way. Because if there's one song I can tell somebody, hey, listen to this. And if you like this, you're probably going to like everything Drott does. Orcus is a good representation of that. Uh, so I, like, I, I really do appreciate that that's how you close the record was like, uh, if you can encompass all of what you do in this one track. So it was very cool. Um, <laughs> I kind of want to switch a little bit and talk a little bit about this logo that you have, because it's really intriguing and interesting to me. Can you tell me what it actually represents and why you're using this logo? It's actually, uh, uh, my brother is, uh, is a great designer. Um, 
he's not working with design right now, but he, he's used to do it back in the days and he's really, really good at it. So, so it was kind of the natural step to go to him, like to, okay, we, can you help us make a logo and build the, the concept around this band? So, yeah, that's <laughs> where it came from, because uh, he, he had a lot of ideas and like looked it in, into to this one. And when we first saw it, we were like, wow, that's amazing. That's <laughs> a really great logo for the band. And, and yeah, it, it feels very right. Um, it, 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 it it almost feels like equal parts of like a Roman legion soldier and like I, I don't know like some kind of squid monster like all mixed together like and and I, that's why I was kind of asking were well, you trying to do like the Cthulhu like with like war themes mixed together because that's the vibe that I get from it like what was the overall tone that you chose that was it just because it was a cool piece or I, I love the fact that it's it, it can be so many different things. Um, you have the, the disc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, and and uh, as you say, like it it can be it can be a like a uh, like a, you say a Roman helmet, like a like a war 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 um, helmet, or or Nordic. Yeah, for that matter, with a you know with a protection down, and but at the same time. It's, we were like really, really into um, like energies, the third eye. I don't know. There, there are many ways to. Uh, what's the word? Tolka, in inter interpret, interpret the logo. No, yeah, is that the way interpret the logo. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, and, yeah. and and, and yeah, I, I totally agree. It's it just it's really interesting and neat, and it's something that when you see it you know it's associated to you so that's kind of really cool like you don't get that a lot these days anymore uh, a lot of logos are just not to be rude to like really cool black and death metal bands but they're just a mess of kind of shapes and symbols like this is this is much more an interesting thing that if i see that i know it's going to be for drawn so that that's kind of cool um i i kind of want to also talk a little bit about if you were asked and you guys were forced to say, okay, somebody's going to listen to Orcus for the very first time. How would you describe the music to someone? Like how, what would you say to someone to listen to it? That's never heard your band before. I don't know. Matthias. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Well, I would probably recommend first time listeners to check out the, the EP first because it's so, well, to me, uh, it feels really open and <laughs> international in a way because we all have our, our musical preferences, of course, local preferences, but, but, but we've all, always been interested in all, all sorts of music and ethnical uh, like vibes in music. Um, well, as, as, as you can hear in the EP, it's, it's a lot of Arabic, but also Asian and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and Nordic, Nordic elements uh, in it. So, um, well, it's sort of it's sort of a kind of heavy world music or something. I don't know. <laughs> See, that's funny that you say that because the way I've been describing it to people is if you mix like ethno ambient with like the beginnings of metal and a ton of prog and jazz, that's kind of what you get. So you kind of just mentioned it in a roundabout way, the same way. It's a very hard thing to explain because not one song is really the same. And that's kind of the, it's not going to be mass appealed, but the people that like it, like myself are going to love this kind of stuff. Uh, you just got, you, you got to be open-minded and willing to hear a lot of different elements. So uh, I, again, th that's really a great way to kind of like, you know, heavy world music is probably the best way to say it that you possibly <laughs> could ever say it. Um, 
how do you guys feel about digital versus physical releases? I, I'm an old man. I'm, I'm 49 years old. I grew up going to record stores. All right. Like this is my world. Like uh, I, I'm forced into a digital world. I choose not to be in a digital world, but I'm forced into it because it's the best way possible. Do you feel that there's a whole new fan base starting to go back more to physical releases or do you think the world is just moving forward to digital only? I don't know. That, that's a very interesting question because um, I, I myself, all, all of us are like you. We grew up like going to record stores and if you wanted to check out a new band, you had to go to the record stores and actually put it on there and listen to it. And if you liked it, you bought it. And if you didn't like the first songs or whatever, you, you skipped it and listened to the next one. So... Uh, um, yeah, I always love the fact that you have to go and buy it and then go home and like put it on, listen to the whole album, look, uh, looking at the artwork uh, and booklets and stuff. And uh, uh, But I'm not sure. Uh, I think our generation, like you say, from like mid 30s and stuff and yeah. was uh, uh, still buying like physical uh, albums both on like vinyl and cd even <laughs> some on cassette i guess but <laughs> but I, i'm not sure we're go going back to that uh, I, I think the vinyl is going to be there uh, for sure because it's a really cool format but then again it's really difficult format to like uh, handle and it, it, it it's expensive uh, in the music industries and because it's so big it's also like a big uh, challenge to like have enough space for like uh, storing it for the record labels or distributors and stuff so i'm not sure i i hope it'll get even more popular but uh, it's a very, it's a very personal thing to own a piece of vinyl. And that's kind of like the way I feel about it is, yeah, I, I love the larger art format. I love enveloping myself and opening if it's a gatefold and looking at it. And if there's actual true artwork in it, I feel like it's a certain breed of person that looks for vinyl. Like they actually look for it. They try and find it. Like, you know, I see interesting colors. I see interesting scapes, you know, like it, 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 interesting pressing ways they do things. And it, it's a piece of art to me. And, and it, if it wasn't that way, I wouldn't be buying it myself. So I'm glad that there's still people out there like ourselves that feel that way and are, you know, digital is great. Like, yeah, don't get me wrong. I love to go in my car, have my phone and be able to listen to any record I want. But sometimes you literally just want to sit down, listen to a record, flip it over, listen to it again, and be actual part of the experience. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But then again, like you said, the, the digital is its not all that bad because it's a great way to discover a lot of music fast. Uh, and, and it's also a good way for like new bands who might not even have a record label or... Mm -hmm. To, to get their music out to, to people. So, but then again, it's crazy. It's like, I don't know what, 60,000 songs released every day. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a lot of music. So, so yeah. Is, it, 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 is Drot going to play live or is it going to just be more of a studio kind of project? I think we're definitely going to play live. Uh, we haven't done so yet because it's been difficult here of course with the whole covid situation and stuff but but yeah we're definitely going to play live cool. so, and, so. and and will it will it be just the three of you live or are you going to bring more people and actually have more of an like you know more of an ensemble cast because i can almost feel that it's going to be kind of a daunting task for just the three of you to be able to do it live yeah, but, but then again, that's how we started the band and that's how the songs, most of them at least, are written. So, so I, I think we definitely want to try to start out with the three of us and okay. see how it works out. Um, but uh, we're not scared to like bring in like at least one more player because like Matthias is playing, of course, all the bass on this shallow. Um, 
and also of course have, have the melodies and stuff and he, he can't do both <laughs> so yeah. it could make sense to like have a bass player playing all the bass so Matthias can mm -hmm. be more free to do other stuff but yeah I think we're probably going to try to to start out with just the three of us and take it from there Cool. So I, I kind of want to talk about the video for the Marauders for a second, if I can. That's kind of where I want to go next. Uh, that is one unsettling video uh, for a very unsettling track. When you guys created this video, was this the actual interpretation you wanted or was it kind of bastardized into this very noir kind of film-esque kind of vibe? Uh uh, uh i'm not sure i uh, i i remember I, I was recording a lot of stuff on like uh i have a go pro camera so it's mm -hmm. like a really cheap and easy but, but it, it works all right and <clears throat> i think i had the, the idea of like making like a lot of videos or at least a couple for like the the darker ep i talked about that was intentional the or the original idea with the Marauders song, but, but it wasn't kind of made for that specific video in the beginning. But then when it ended up on the album and we together with By North, we said that it was going to be the first single. Uh, I thought, well, let's let's try to like edit <laughs> some of these crazy clips together and and see so <laughs> yeah it, it's it's pretty funny the, the, the two guys you see like hanging from a three or something that's actually me and my brother because <laughs> oh. we're, we're having like almost a family reunion with its kids and my mom and uh, a girl i was seeing at the moment so we were up in the woods and i brought the camera and a lot of dolls so yeah let's have, a have fun in the forest <laughs> <laughs> Family pick a picnic. I'm just going to do some <laughs> video shoots uh, with dolls and stuff. So. Very cool. Mateus, is, is there anything uh, in that video that you didn't like? Or was there something that <laughs> you, like, you were like, you know what, maybe this is a little over the top? <laughs> well, with Orve, you never know. So um, he was kind of sending me different versions. <laughs> But uh, I think for this for this track um, releasing such an unsettling video is uh, it's the right thing to do. Cool. And in the in the narrative, like if you see it alone and uh, before the album was released, it was maybe a bit for some a bit too unsettling. But but in the narrative, it's kind of what it's all about, actually. So cool. the marauders are gruesome. Yeah. So that's where I kind of want to bring this uh, into is the actual theme and ideology of Orcus. Can you guys talk a little bit about that? Because it seems much deeper than even what you get when you listen to it. So can you kind of talk about like, what was the mindset? What was the actual idea behind this release? Because it's very cohesive in, in a chaotic way, but it's very cohesive. Like the tracks all kind of interplay into each other and build different emotional feelings as you go along. Well, yeah, um, I think we, uh, we talked a lot about it because we, we uh, as Arvind uh, mentioned, we had this uh, idea or this kind of, vision about releasing two EPs, one quite bright and open and then one really more, more on the dark side. Uh, before we uh, actually uh, uh, agreed on going for like a, a full album instead. Uh, so, so we discussed it a lot, uh, a lot and, and, and we're all kind of uh, fascinated by all sorts of, um, uh, well, I wouldn't say religion, but, but uh, um, what's the word? Um, mythologies? Yeah, mythologies, yeah. Uh, and and uh, 
and uh, um, of course we grew up with uh, like in uh, uh, Norway as a, as a very like old school protestantic mm-hmm. uh, system that that's not well I wouldn't say that all Norwegians are Christian but but in school we're we're kind of raised into learning a lot about but uh, Christianity and but also the the Nordic uh, the Nordic um, uh, Nordic mythology. Mm-hmm. Um, so f- for us, it was interesting to try to d- dive into something a bit more well. What can you say? Exotic for us, uh, like the m- more of the like the Mediterranean landscape, like Orcus. It's 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 from the Etruscan, mm-hmm. um, like o- old Italian mythology. Um, combining it with a bit of Greek uh, elements. Uh, and we see that all of these, well, all these symbols, they are, are, they are similar around the world. Like for the, like the Sikupum uh, in, 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 uh, in, in Greek mythology, it's the, it's the fairy, fairy man uh, bringing the, the souls uh, over to the, to the, um, uh, uh, the afterlife. Mm-hmm. As in Nordic mythology, you have the Valkyrie who uh, picks up the warriors on the field on horses and go to uh, Valhalla. It's a, it's a, like an international theme. All, uh, all of these uh, like mytholo- mythological uh, uh, preferences we use. So, so we landed there, and we wanted it to be, be uh, like uh, a, a a journey. Uh, a kind of a classical, uh, what's like, antique journey mm-hmm. uh, for uh, for the band for for Drott. Nice, so, yeah. So the the last question I'm going to have for you guys before I wrap this all up is: Is there anything that you wouldn't do in Drott? Is there a style? Is there an idea? Is there a thought that's just? And I'm not talking about like rap or anything like that, but like, you know, like as far as within the boundaries that you're working right now, is there something that's just off limits or is it pretty much open for anything? Oh, we're definitely open for anything. And it's probably going to be a lot of different stuff in the future as well, because I don't think we want to end up. Uh, I mean, we have, I guess, with the way we mix different elements, it's kind of the sound in itself. So we'll definitely keep like mixing different elements in and maybe we'll even do some rap someday. <laughs> <laughs> don't be surprised if we do. <laughs> so no, I, I don't think it has any boundaries or limits to what we will do. As long as we like it and think it's good and interesting, why not? <laughs> No, very cool. Like, like I was going to say, hey, Mains did it and Mains made one of the coolest records ever. And there's a lot of rap on that record. So uh, I'm just going to say like, and that shocked me because I actually liked it. So I was, yeah, you know, I mean, there, there's never, there, there's, there's a never say die element to that. Very cool. Uh, I am going to close with letting the two of you kind of talk about draw it a bit. If there's anything upcoming, if there's anything you'd like to kind of promote, please do that. Uh. Well, what should we say? We really look forward to like keep making new music because now we've, it's been a lot of focus on this album, of course, uh, both recording it, releasing it, making all the promo stuff. And, and um, yeah, since things have gone more back to like normal now, we're all pretty busy at the moment. So, um, but we have a lot of ideas even a lot of like ideas from jam, jam sessions and stuff and also like more written stuff. We have a lot of more uh, material even recorded. So yeah, we definitely look forward to go back to like writing music and take the next step, <laughs> figuring out what, what we're going to do next. But as I said, we already have a lot of ideas. So, so um, yeah cool. that's next i guess and of course like playing live soon so. 
is there is there anything upcoming soon uh, to perform live or is it just kind of a thought process right now it's uh it's, we haven't like um scheduled anything but we will we want to play at least before the end of the year so i think the plan is to like maybe late november or early december or something like nice. get started and so we're probably going to do like a more release show i guess in in bergen our mm-hmm. hometown and yeah see from there it takes you have anything you want to close with More music to be released. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, uh, guys, again, thank you so much. Uh, love this new record. Love the EP as well, too, thank before you. this. So I just want to say thank you for like thank you for making interesting original music. That's kind of the thing why I wanted to talk to you is uh, there's so many black metal. There's so many death metal bands. When somebody does interesting original music, that's when I want to talk to them. So... Again, I will make sure that your social media and that your band camp and your label and stuff are all on this as well. But other than that, Clint from the doorway to hanging out with the guys from Drot. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you.